So you know what? I think it's finally time to review a set of speakers that most people can actually afford. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay guys, so here's the focus of today's review, the Yamo S809. So this is a speaker that's been around for a number of years now, and the reason why I'm covering it today is due to its reputation for being easy to work with, while at the same time offering up good sound at a good price. So let's go ahead and kick things off with pricing information first. Here in the US, you can pick up a set of these speakers for as low as $330 a pair new. And mind you, that price also includes shipping to your home, which is kind of crazy. So what can you get for that kind of money? Well, in a nutshell, you're getting a front ported two and a half way floor standing loudspeaker. Up top, we have a one inch soft dome tweeter housed inside this little wave guide or short horn. And then beneath that, we have three five inch woofers. And what you're also getting with the 809 is an affordable tower speaker with style. You have that wood accent around the tweeter. You have these sharp and clean lines. You have a wood accent on the very bottom of the speaker. And when you look at it, it kind of comes across as something that you'd find in an Ikea catalog. And you know what? I am all here for that because let's face it, most other affordable towers in this range, well, they kind of look like sad black boxes, but not these speakers. And they also come with some pretty nifty accessories. Starting with the grills, the grills do not feel cheap at all. There's good weight behind them. The material is nice and rugged and plus they're magnetic. And to use them, you just hold them up to the speaker, let go and bam, easy peasy. The 809s also come with these metal feet to stabilize the speaker and to keep them from tipping over. So all in all, everything looks great about the 809 until we get up here. So my review sample came with the veneer literally peeling off the speaker directly out of the box, which is pretty disappointing. We have a flappy bit over here, another flappy bit on this corner, and it's the same story with the other speaker. And really guys, this gives me the opportunity to pander to my audience by coming across like the typical YouTuber. Example, <clears throat> This lack of quality control is completely unacceptable. How could I possibly recommend this to my audience? Zero out of 10, do not buy. And don't get me wrong, I'm well within my right to feel that way. After all, if I was a customer, I wouldn't exactly be happy with that. However, to be fair, I went online to discover how many other individuals ran into the same exact problem. And while it's clear that Yamo's quality control definitely isn't the best, not that many people reported this exact issue, leading me to believe that this is a very rare event. Still, it's my job to report my experience with you guys, and sadly, this is a part of that experience. Anyway, I think the only other thing we need to talk about here are why there are holes on top of this speaker. And in short, that is for the Yamo Dolby Atmos module. So if you're into home theater and you're really big into Atmos, you just buy the module, attach it to the speaker, and then, then there you go. So that is going to be it for the 809. So now that we're acquainted with the speaker, let's go ahead and talk about how it sounds. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this evaluation is to break everything down into two sections. The first is dedicated to those of you who are interested in your first set of speakers and you don't really consider yourself to be an audiophile. And then the second part is going to be dedicated to those of you who have more experience to draw from, meaning that you likely understand audiophile phraseology. So with that said, let's get right to it. And when you really get right down to it, the 809 is meant to be somebody's first loudspeaker. It's for somebody who says, hey, look, I love music, I love movies, and I want to listen to all of that in a more immersive way. You want sound quality that's better than what you get from, say, a sound bar or a wireless system. And you want it to look good and to be affordable. And to that end, I think the 809 is a good solution. All you really need to do is to add a receiver and then away you go. For 150 bucks or 200 bucks more, you have sound that will beat just about any mass market solution you can think of for under $2,000. That's pretty cool. Now that doesn't answer what these speakers sound like though, so let's talk about that real quick. In a nutshell, what you're getting out of the 809 is a speaker that projects sound in a forward way. It gives you this immersive sound field in your room. The treble is going to be very crisp, allowing you to hear detail easily. In fact, some of you will be hearing detail from this speaker that you've never ever heard before from your music or movies. The mid-range, which is where most sound content lives, is clear. So if you watch movies, there should never be a moment to where you can't understand what's being said in terms of dialogue. And then the bass is going to be pretty strong for a speaker its size. 
The speaker is also pretty easy to work with. You don't need some big expensive amplifier to go with it. And when it comes to positioning in a room, while it does sound best when you can give it some room to breathe, or in other words, when you can pull it a few feet out into your room, it'll still sound fine next to a wall boundary. The bass will be a little bit thicker, but that can also make it more fun to listen to. Of course, it's not all roses and sunshine with the 809. Not everybody is going to love the look. The quality control may be questionable. The treble is very crisp and pronounced. In fact, if you're sensitive to high frequency information, then you might be better off going with a different set of speakers. My recommendation would be the Polk Audio T50s. No, they're not as good looking, but they're every bit as good as the 809s and they have more of a softer and fuller sound. The only other issue would be if you're a bass head, then you'll probably need to buy a subwoofer or two to go with these speakers because while they do deliver good bass, it's not going to give you that visceral kind of shake your insides type of a bass response. Otherwise though, if you're looking for an affordable, good looking speaker that delivers an impressive sound and this is your very first speaker, yeah, you know what? It's definitely worth checking out. Now with that out of the way, let me talk to those of you who have experience because we definitely need to have a different conversation. Okay, so this section goes out to those of you who are going to be just a little more critical about what you hear. And a fair warning, the tone of this section is going to be completely different from the tone that was in the previous segment. And here's why. When you get right down to it, the Yamo S809 is a speaker that has a classic V-curve presentation. There is a whole lot of treble, there's a boost in the bass, the mid-range is withdrawn, and really, some of you are going to like this sound but there are two major problems with the 809, mostly being the treble and the mid-range. Let's talk about the treble first. The treble, well, there's no other way to say it really. The treble is bright. It's not just lively or tilted up. It can dominate the entire presentation. And worst off, sometimes it doesn't even sound well integrated with the mid-range. This is a presentation that can quickly become fatiguing over time. Now, of course, it's not always going to be bad. There are some benefits. It can sound effortlessly detailed and spacious and with the right recordings, specifically jazz and classical, it can even be impressive for the money. But as soon as you throw something challenging its way, like rock or indie, forget it. You're just getting a front row ticket to Treble Town. And what's going on here is that Yamo is forcing a lot of high frequency information to a cheap tweeter. Now don't get me wrong, you can get away with this voicing scheme whenever you're using higher quality drivers. In fact, they get away with that with their higher end speakers. But here when you're dealing with a cheap speaker, it just doesn't work all too well. And then there's the mid-range. There is a pretty big dip at the crossover point between the tweeter and the mid-range driver. And this creates this kind of hollow sound that makes pretty much every vocalist, male or female, sound kind of nasally and thin. Definitely not something that I like, but who knows, maybe you will. And then when it comes to the bass, well, the bass is interesting because if you can pull this speaker out far enough into the room, like say by a few feet, the treble, or treble, the bass actually becomes pretty tight and clean for a speaker in its range. However, as soon as you move the speaker next to a wall boundary, it just becomes fat and bloated and not very refined. Fun to listen to, but for a critical listener, it's probably not going to be the most pleasant listening experience for you. But it's not all bad with the 809. It's actually a very dynamic speaker. It's very easy to drive. In fact, if you want to warm up the sound, you could use a good tube amplifier and you don't need to use a whole lot of power for it. I mean, a good 10 to 12 watts should be fine for most listening spaces, unless of course you listen at crazy loud volumes. But still, for the experienced listener, I can't find too many redeeming things about the 809. I think there are just better solutions out there for the money. And to really hammer home that point, let's go over a comparison. Okay, so let's give this review some context by comparing the Yamo 809 to more of a traditional audiophile solution, particularly at around the same price point. 
So to the left, we have the Yamo Tower, and then to the right, we have the Q Acoustics 3020i, a bookshelf speaker which retails for around $350 a pair. So why do I consider it to be more of a traditional audiophile solution? Well, for starters, it has better build quality and fit and finish. In fact, when you compare the two speakers side by side, it's not even really much of a contest. But then, of course, and most importantly, there's a difference in sound quality. The Q Acoustics has the type of sound that more experienced listeners will likely prefer over what you get with the Yamo Towers, starting with driver integration, which is the integration between the tweeter and the woofer. It is much better through the Q Acoustics speaker. It's more seamless and just more balanced sounding. Whereas on the Yamo Towers, there are times to where the tweeter just straight up sounds detached from the rest of the presentation, a problem that you do not run into with the Q Acoustic speaker. And then there's going to be treble. The treble on the Q Acoustic speaker is smoother and just straight up easier on your ears. Whereas with the Yamos, the sound can be bright and at times just outright fatiguing and unpleasant. Then there's going to be the mid-range, which sounds fuller and more natural through the Q acoustic speaker. And that's because it doesn't feature the same dramatic dip in the upper mid-range that you get with the Yamos. So if you're somebody who listens to vocal music and or acoustic oriented music, you will likely prefer the more natural sound of the Q acoustics presentation. And then there's going to be the bass. While you don't get as much bass through the small bookshelf speaker as you do with the larger tower, what you do get is pretty impressive for its size, but most importantly, you get superior bass quality. It's quicker, it's more nuanced, and again, it sounds more natural. And really, this is a comparison between quality and quantity. Now, that's not to say that Yamo doesn't have its own advantages. It's a bigger speaker, meaning that it's more dynamic. You get stronger and deeper bass output. You can play it at louder volumes. It's slightly more sensitive, which means you don't need as much power to take it to louder volumes. And when it comes to performance, it does have one big advantage, which is it can lay down a wider sound stage. So when you add all of that up, the Yamo Tower is the more lively sounding speaker that can fill a bigger room with more sound. And to some people, that is going to be preferable over the more natural and balanced presentation of the Q Acoustic solution. As always, there's no right or wrong here, it's just a matter of choosing what it is that you prefer. Having said that, if you're somebody who thinks, hey, I think I'd like that kind of lively sound of the Yamo presentation, if that's you, then I would say, hold off on buying these if you're going to be more of a critical listener, and then save your money for the higher end Yamo solutions, particularly the C95 and the C97. They give you the same general presentation that you get with the 809s, only they're pretty much better in every single way, and it's definitely worth the wait. Anyway, that is going to be my take on how these speakers compare to one another, so let's go ahead and wrap up this review. So if you've made it to this point in the review, you're probably thinking, what in the heck is going on? On one hand, this review seems to compliment the speaker and even recommend it to people, but then with a different hand, I'm basically trashing the speaker. What is the deal? So this is what's going on. When you get right down to it, the Yamo S809 not only has the kind of sound that you're either going to love or hate, but it's also a product that's geared towards the first time buyer. It's not for people like me. This is for somebody who's never owned another set of speakers before, maybe outside of a sound bar or some kind of wireless solution. You know you want something that looks good, that's affordable, that has an impressive presentation. And if you want it in a floor standing loudspeaker, then I think the 809 checks off most of those boxes. And let's face it, when you're buying your first set of speakers, you want to be impressed. You want it to look good. You want to be able to say that you're hearing detail that you've never heard before, or that the sound is enveloping you. And the 809s do that. It's just when you listen to them with more of a critical ear, when you have more reference points to draw from, that's when you realize its weaknesses and to many experienced listeners, those weaknesses just aren't going to hold up well over time. Meaning that if you're looking for a solution in this price range, and you're going to be critical about it, then there will be other options to consider that will probably be a better fit for you. Hence, the somewhat bipolar review 
of the 809. For the right person, it's a good solution. Simple as that. Anyway, that is going to be my take on this speaker. Hopefully you took something away from this. I'm sure I'll learn in the comment section here soon enough. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Enjoy the music, and until next time, peace.